Uh, also, I can see just my diary, yeah, or just a list of people's diaries, uh, or just my team's diary to dos and filters, and obviously all. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's create an appointment. Yeah. So on the tenth, let's say, um, let's kind of new activity. I can create a new activity from the menu by clicking on the actual calendar, or or actually create, clicking new activity up there. Um, all right. So let's just say I've got a, a meeting. I don't know, to discuss the quote. Okay. The type of activity I can do is obviously to do a case, a meeting, a call, whatever. But this is going to be a meeting. If I tick it as private, okay, then what it means is that everyone can see I'm busy in my diary if they look at my diary, but they can't actually see what I'm doing. Um, on the odd occasion, they obviously... You know, it, it, might, it might be a private appointment. Okay, so if I type in, I don't know, a, well, I think we'll just have to take a list here, a customer France, let's pick someone else. Uh, example lead company, there we go. Okay, um, it's automatically put me in, so it's assigned to me, but I could assign it to someone else. It would have automatically put my team in if I'd have been assigned to a team. Uh, the date is the 4th, okay, but I can change that date. I can make the duration whatever I want. Um, and I've obviously got some other, other information here as well. So I put some details in. Uh, it's to discuss the quote. Um, I can also have some other attendees in the meeting. I want to have, let's say, uh, admin, US in, and guest to be also in on the meeting. And I also need the uh, conference uh, room and the projector. Okay. So what I can do now is I can actually look at the availability uh, of the people and the resources. So I can see that, well, I'm actually busy Yeah, on that day. Um, for um, for those times, but I'm actually free after. I can actually change the date if I want to. But I say, oh, okay, well, three o'clock's fine. So it changes the appointment to three o'clock. I could send everybody an email to confirm, uh, so they actually to it reminds them that they've actually I've actually put some, a date in their diary. Uh, but that's effectively it. I've just created an appointment, a meeting. I've been able to schedule other people uh, and resources. Okay, so let's um, let's also, let's, do, let's do another activity like a to do. Okay, so what to do is, obviously I've already done pick up the, take the car for service and pick up my laundry. Um, I don't know, uh, pick uh, kids up from school, there you go. Okay, or, uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so it's a to do, I don't have to tie it to any particular contact. Um, that's it, I save that. Let's refresh the list, and you can see that basically um, I've got, another to do in the list. Okay, right. Um, I've all, I, can, I can view my diary by the week, by the working week, uh, by the day, um, and obviously I can see there's a list if I wanted to, so I don't have to see it as a kind of calendar view. Okay, right. Um, okay, so um, now I'm, now I'm going to move to my case dashboard. Okay. Um, the case dashboard, okay, shows you uh, all, com all, co all companies have complaints from customers or problems with customers, okay? Now, it's up to you how you deal with those, but one of the ways you could deal with them is uh, by logging them, yeah? Uh, for example, you know, a, a computer company, which obviously I'm used to running, uh, we used to have a kind of uh, a support team, uh, a, a, a programming team and an engineering team, um, and those uh, we would log every call. Okay, so if, if someone called in and basically said, I've got a problem with this or I've got a problem with that, we'd actually log that and we would have, have a service level agreement that was uh, eight working hours. Um, so we obviously wanted to respond to everybody and get, everybody, get every problems, everyone's problems sorted out within that eight working hours. Okay, so this is what this is about. So if I just kind of go into setup, okay, and into service, le uh, le uh, service level agreement calendar, what you can see is we've actually set up already for the next two years the bank holidays for England and Wales. Okay, so, we, so we've identified holidays. We've also identified a working week. Okay, so our working week in this company is Monday to Friday, 9 till 5. Okay, and then what we do is we actually create service level agreements. So we've just got a default service level agreement here with a default business calendar, default holiday calendar, and we've said eight working hours. So what it'll effectively do is every, every case we log, it'll default to eight working hours. Uh, as our kind of uh, due time to respond to people. Okay, um, 
so if I was in the engineering team, I could actually just look at this by team by using this filter, if I got those up. Uh, if I was just in the kind of programming team, I could do exactly the same thing. But let's, let's, let's log a new case. Okay, so customers called in. Um, they've got a problem. Uh, it's a network problem. Um, and the customer is uh, something to do with lead. Uh, here we go, example lead company. Uh, and it's automatically put in that we should be responding to this uh, by tomorrow at 10.58. So, so the, the, the service level agreement, uh, were, if someone logged a call today at 10.57, eight working hours on is obviously 10.58 tomorrow. Um, okay, rather than obviously, you know, I don't know, 10 o'clock tonight. Um, okay, so we can put the details of the problem in. They've got a problem with the network. Um, we can also, uh, if we actually complete this call at any point, put a solution in. We can also tie it to individual items uh, if there's a particular problem so we can start building up a knowledge base. This is not a knowledge base at the moment, but essentially um, the underlying structure there is for it. Okay, so I'll save and close that. Uh, we've just added a case uh, to our list and you can see that if it's between 0 and 50% of the service level agreement, then it's in green, green traffic light. If it's between 50% and obviously 100% of the S service level agreement, it's amber. And obviously if it's over the service level agreement, then it's red. So you can see we've got a problem here. So if I kind of, uh, I can actually show this graph by service level agreement. So you can see that I've got something logged, something near SLA. And if I just say, just give me the overdue ones, then it'll automatically filter the list that way. Give me the nearing SLA and the overdue ones. Let's sort these out first, because these are the ones that, you know, uh, should be sorted out first. Okay, so it's got full case management in there. Um, okay, opportunities. We have the same situation, similar to the case management, um, where we can log opportunities linked to quotes, um, or uh, which, are, which can be quotes that are in the system based on stock items, or we can base it on, uh, like say someone does a Word document quote, um, and then just wants to attach that to the opportunity. Okay, so let's, um, let's create a new opportunity. Um, one feature of the system actually is that if you right mouse click on any columns anywhere or any search list, Okay, you can actually um, choose what you want to sort by. So this is sorted by obviously stage, team, assigned to, and status. But if I didn't want to do that, let's say I just want to kind of dump status in there, put the assigned to in there, and just do a stage and team. I could, and you can and you can do that everywhere. Uh, you can also column choose, so you can sort of say, well, I don't really need state. I don't really want assigned to in there or whatever, uh, or or open date, and you just drag them off. Okay, so let's look at a new, a new opportunity. Okay, to our lead company here. Just example contact. Okay, so opportunity name. Uh, we've quoted them for a new network. Since they've been having so many problems with the old one. Okay, um, so uh, what's the status? It's either in progress or it's completed. And if it's completed, has it been sold or has it been lost? Okay, so this is in progress. Right, the estimated uh, due date, now a uh, close date. Now the red circle here means that you, it's, it's required. For our data to be half meaningful, we really need some sort of estimate on when are these things due, okay? So if I said the end of the month, uh, you, the stages are user definable. You create as many as you want and whichever ones you want. So I've obviously created, you know, preliminary quoted, meeting arranged, revised quote, another meeting required, more information. Yeah. Um, is it linked to a particular campaign wave? What, what was the source? Um, and we've got some static data in here, but you can add to this. Yeah. Or you can take, or you can get rid of the stuff that's in there and just create your own. Okay. So uh, there's an opportunity. Okay. I'll save that opportunity. And if you look in the documents tab you can see that if you're one of those kind of type of companies that just does a big word quote or whatever, yeah, and then kind of cut and paste stuff and then prints it off and then sends it out, you can log the opportunity and, cut and, and attach the Word document to the opportunity. Okay, but if you're one of those companies that wants to do stock quoting uh, based on stock items uh, and obviously the special pricing that you might have set up in the customer account, then obviously this is where you can do a brand new quote here and now, <clears throat> okay, or you can actually assign existing quotes you've already done.